My name is Sia Ndazamini and I'm an under 40 CEO. The African Renaissance. The concept that the African people and nation shall overcome the current challenges confronting the continent and achieve cultural, scientific, and economic renewal is here and with young men and women taking the lead. Some call them the new school heroes. We call them under 40 CEOs. Sienda Lamini worked his way up in the hospitality industry after graduating from the Cape Town Hotel School with a hotel management qualification. He spent four years in an in-service training post at Protea Hotel, learning every aspect of the hotel business from the bottom up. He became a general manager at the Protea Hotel by the time he was 25, and during this time, he was the youngest in the hotel group, working with people the same age as his father. 13 years into his career, Sianda was able to partner up with Key Spirit Development to create the first Regency Apartment Hotel, which took two years to build. Sianda Dlamini is the founder and CEO at Regency Apartment Hotel in Pretoria, South Africa. All right, welcome to Under 40 CEOs, Sianda. Thank you. All right. Yours is an amazing story, Sianda. You know, um, and I'd like to go back to the very beginning uh, at uh, Peter Marisburg, uh, where you were born. Tell me about, you know, being born into the Lamini uh, household and your preteen years. Sure. So it all really began in 83 when I was born. And um, childhood had all the fair share of trials and tribulations, like any other family. But I think um, what set the foundation for what was to come was a strong, you know, Christian background and a solid family and a strong mum. You bagged a diploma in hospitality management. Uh, that was back in 2005 at uh, University of Cape Town. Um, why hospitality in the first place? During high school, I um, was involved with the school's catering club. Mm -hmm. um, and I always laugh and say I took it so seriously like it was a job, but actually it was just an extra mural activity. And it really sparked the interest for the industry. And of course, what I thought I knew then versus what it is now are two different things. So that is where it really it began. And I was fortunate that by the age of 17, I knew what I wanted to do. And that is what I nurtured, you know, up until this point. All right, so in 2001, when you first worked uh you know, tell you were earning, I believe, 850 rands. Uh, did you envisage that 17, 18 years down the line, you'd be running a 350 million rand, you know, hotel? Yes. Um, did you ever envisage that you'd be at this point now? I did. Right. 35 years also. Look, um, even so in the mind of a 17 year old, what did it look like? Look, I knew I would get to this point. Uh, and I worked very hard to get to this point. It certainly came a lot sooner than I anticipated, and it came a lot bigger than I had envisioned. Mm -hmm. But I knew this was my path, mm -hmm. and I was willing to do whatever it took to get here. All right, so permit me to quote you from this interview. Um, you said, and I quote, this is all I've ever wanted to do. All my life, I've never done anything small. It's been big yeah. or nothing at all. Indeed. Now tell me about the series of big moves you made that got you here. I think the highlight of it all really was when I, saw, I became GM at 25. In Cape Town, I speak under correction, but I don't know any other general manager of any hotel of color but myself at the time. And in the group that I worked for at the time, I certainly was the youngest GM. Wow. So that way it really began, um, and by the you know, age of 32, I was already a director of an organization. Wow. Um, so it never really, it started very small, in humble, with very humble beginnings, but I made it work, and I made it what it became, which is the melody of my life. Mm. It's either it happens in huge big measures, or it doesn't happen at all, even in my personal space. So tell me, what went into getting this hotel built? A lot. Yeah. Really a lot. But it all started with just belief in self and investing in your belief and in your vision. 
and having the confidence to go out there and get it done and the confidence and the persuasion mm. from your confidence and being clear about your vision it took all of that to get the ball in motion mm. if i had not been confident if i had not believed in my vision if i didn't have a solid team that bought into my vision and became a part of it it would never have happened so tell me, what is Regency Hotel's um, unique selling point? The apartments, the fact that yeah, our, our, it's an apartment hotel, um, our location, and uh, more personal for me is obviously that you know what it is youth run, and it is run by you know local South African uh, you know boys and girls who are aggressive and, and hungry for more. So the service levels are on the next level. The hunger to get the job done is bigger than anything but just the client satisfaction. So that for me really sets us apart. Most of our clients come back. Mm. Most of our clients you know, support us, they're loyal to us. Um, all we just need to do is just really be there and support and call when we're in need. And they're always there. All right, so in June of 2018, um, when the Regency Hotel launched, tell me about those mix of thoughts, emotions, and feelings um, that you experienced at the time. Um, I think, again, I go back to the fact that it all built up to that. Um, yes. I had a lot of feelings and thoughts in my mind, and I was you know, excited and nervous and anxious, but because it was my time to do it, I was very confident through the process. I was very calm through the process. The day of the launch, everyone was running around panicking. I was just like, give me the mic. Let me say hello and welcome to my guests, you know? Um, and that was what it was about because everything led to that point. Mm. Everything that had to happen before happened the way it was supposed to have happened. Mm. Certain things were planned mm. and they happened as as per the plan. Mm -hmm. Some things didn't happen as per the plan, mm -hmm. but they happened and it was all right. They mm -hmm. were meant to have happened. We had invested enough time, effort and money into the most relevant things. The staff were trained and ready for the launch and to open the doors. You know, the finest possible products were already installed and placed in their rightful places. We were ready. We needed to open our doors for the next level of readiness. So why launch in Pretoria? The area is booming. Um, it's fast becoming the centre of Pretoria. Um, you know, most corporates are moving to the mainland main area, and that's obviously where we are. You know, the access to the airport is quick and easy. The airport is, you know, literally just down the same highway that you, you know, would use to get to Johannesburg. So its location mainly, and the fact that this the area is really booming, and where it's it's becoming the business hub. Of, of Pretoria. It's important to recognize risk because that's how you mitigate them. That's how you plan your next moves and ensure you're covering all your bases. I like risks that make me cautious, which makes me think everything through, Siander has said. This is a man who has faced numerous hurdles to get where he is today. I am positive and knows he can handle the challenges he will yet face. All right, so what are those major hurdles and challenges uh, that you've had to overcome to make the strides that you've made so far? Look, the biggest thing that comes to mind first and foremost is that unfortunately our country isn't ready for transformation. A lot of the hurdles we faced were purely because here's a black man venturing into an unknown zone. Um, South Africa has never seen a black entrepreneur who is in the hotel industry. So they don't understand the concept of it all. So whenever we knocked on doors, the doors would just be shut. Not because my business is any inferior to a mine, to a transport company or a logistics company or, uh, or whatever. It's just my area of expertise are unknown. Mm. Therefore, the doors would just be shut. Mm. And certainly, there's also this level of distrust that how can a 35-year-old do this? Mm. There's something that's unfishy here. Let's detach and let's see how it goes. Um, and I also learned that black entrepreneurs were the hardest on me. Mm. They just never bought into the vision. They just never supported it. Um, they were just the hardest. And I learned as well that, you know, I was raised to send the lift back down to bring the next lot of Sianders coming up. And a lot of the entrepreneurs that I certainly looked up to and hoped they would send a bit of a rope down, it wasn't the case. Mm. However, that broadened my horizons. I had to go back to the drawing board and find a like-minded 
people who could support and open a door here and there and put in a good word here and there and they were there they were just not the people i thought it would be mm. amazing so beyond these challenges what would you say uh, makes the south african business uh, landscape unique so obviously south africa is still a young up and coming if i can call it that you know um democracy so I, I get the sense from experience, in fact, I, get, I know for a fact that a lot of people are still stuck in the self-enrichment phase. Oh. They are still stuck in trying to catch up from the in injustices of the past. They are still trying to look out for themselves and do things for themselves. And not everyone, some people will help you, but it's gonna come at a price. Mm. So we still have to learn a lot as a country that in order for us to really move forward, fill all the gaps with unemployment, um, you know, and so forth. We need to be willing, again, to send the lift down, mm. you know, at no cost. And think beyond that, think beyond your self-enrichment, think you know, beyond connecting a family member, a friend, a spouse's family, mm -hmm. whatever the case is, just that it, gener it, 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 it generates opportunities for fellow South Africans mm -hmm. and for Africans that are living in South Africa outside your own family structure. Mm -hmm. So talking about structure, what is the current business structure um, at Regency Hotels? So I am the owner of business, of the business. I am the sole director. I've got a shareholder who's not involved in the business. Um, you know, off camera, you were telling me about your future plans uh, um, in, in the space that you, you've come to own. Um, please do share this exclusive with us. Okay, now that you've asked so nicely. <laughs> <laughs> so look, we definitely are approaching phase two of mm -hmm. um, construction mm -hmm. to the Regency. Okay. Starting early in the new year, mm -hmm. we're doing quite a big conference and convention center in the space next door. Yeah. And then we have got um, two more hotels lined up that should launch before the end of 2019 mm. in Gauteng. And then another one in two other provinces, which I can't share at the stage. Mm. That should be complete early 2020. Wow, that's amazing. And that's, that's obviously what we've got on the plan. Um, there are a few people that are talking to us um, with existing buildings that would like to transform so we'll see how it goes but what we've got on the plan is definitely you know the one next door and two others in Gauteng and two outside the province. What are the most critical lessons uh, that you've learned and can share on running a business to profitability? Hands on is the first one. I often say that people ask me even on social media why are you not accessible at events like the Durban July? Why don't we see you at the Polo? Why don't you see you uh, at this event and that event? It is not my business. <laughs> it is not my business. Mm. I'm not here to be a socialite. I'm here to run my business. Mm. And that's what I have learned is the biggest result or lead to failure for most entrepreneurs. We forget why we are in business. We forget why we do what we do. We got caught up in the limelight, in you know, fancy suits and fancy outfits at the right event, sipping on champagne. In those critical times, that's where you should be investing time in your business. Mm -hmm. We forget why in the vision and the reasons really why we do what we do, we get caught up in the limelight and trying to become like celebrities and be seen spending money that we should be investing in our businesses in all the wrong places. So I've learned to bet my business down. That you can judge me for. You can judge me for not being at the Deb in July, that's okay. Judge me by the quality of my product. Judge me by the amount of time I spend nurturing my product. Judge me by the time I spend investing in my team, empowering them. Judge me with those things. So how has travel and interacting with different cultures, you know, added value to you and shaped your person and even um, added value to the business? You know, it's exposure. So I try and travel as much as possible so that nothing is ever new to me. Nothing takes me by surprise. Nothing sways me from what needs to be done because it's all new to me. Half the time I try and stay ahead of, of trends because I travel and by the time it comes here and everyone's crazy over it, I've been through it, I've done it. 
um, and it influences hugely in the business that we're into. I've traveled extensively. I've just returned from Asia. I had never really been to Asia to the extent that I've done it now. So, you know, I've done it, stayed at all the best hotels um, and really learned from fellow hoteliers, you know, who, who inspire me. So I stayed at all the best hotels that I like, you know, through uh, Hong Kong into um, Thailand and etc. Really invested a lot of time and a bit of money into really learning from, you know, the entrepreneurs and the hoteliers that inspire me to come back and bring the influence into my own space and business. That's great. Um, so tell me, uh, you've received various nods, accolades, recognitions, you know, the press is buzzing uh, about all that Sianda is doing in this space. What do those nods, accolades, uh, recognition, what do they truly mean to you? Um, a lot of them mean a lot because it's obviously a privilege to share my story and to say to anyone anywhere in the world reading the story that, you know what, it is possible um, I started from where an average kid in Africa starts. I didn't have, my parents didn't drive me to school in a Bentley. At the best of times I walked to school. And when they drove me to school, it was in a, a regular BMW or a Corolla or whatever it was that they were driving at the time. So, and when I certainly left school, I had a vision and a dream and I had to start from the rock bottom and work my way up. So they mean a lot to me from the inspirational story. I can say that often they are misinterpreted to another feather on my back and that is not what it's about. Those who know me and know me very well would attest. I'm not, you know, a fleshy type of person. I'm not really into, you know, self-gratification and, and all of those things. So those articles aren't out there. The interviews I do are not to show how great I am, but merely just to share my story, to inspire, you know, a little boy or girl wherever in Africa or wherever in the world that ultimately your dreams are valid. It's up to you what you make of them. All right, let's talk about people now. Um, we know that human resources are a critical element to consider when building any enterprise. Um, how do you typically hire? Attitude. I hire for great attitude and skill follows. We can train you on skill. If you come here and you're a sponge, you were me at the age of 17 saying, listen, I want to learn, I want to do this, show me how. And if you come with the attitude that I had that there's no job too low for me, mm -hmm. There is no job I can't do because of where I come from, what I've done, where I've been, who my parents are, who my parents know, who I know. You're in the wrong place. But if you come in, as I always use a sponge, take a, a, a dry sponge, put it in water, it absorbs so much water. So if you come here with that attitude, I will give you a career and not a job. There's a big difference mm -hmm. between the two. I'll give you a career. And um, the guys that have given me that are still with me, most of them. Some of them joined me in various organizations that I worked for previously, and because they were phenomenal and they were part of my vision and my dream and I could work with them, they've just moved with me along the way. How would you describe your leadership style? I'm very particular about how things should be done, and then I trust you with it, I leave you with it, my door is open, come back and ask questions. So yes, I'm very direct with how things, how I want things done, and I will give you all that information, I will get your buy-in into it, and let's get it done. And mm -hmm. obviously with your buy-in, you are welcome to then say to me, you know, my thoughts are X, I'm thinking that maybe we'll let's look at this, we'll discuss it, as long as we then get results, I'm happy. Tell me honestly about your flaws and failings as a leader. Uh, that's just the thing. I think I'm a bit of a perfectionist. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes I have to remind myself that I'm not the one executing it. So the result will not be what the result would have been had I done it myself. So I have to remind myself to let the person doing also bring about the change or their own influence and their own stamp in what they're doing. Because I'm working with a lot of young leaders, future leaders, I've also give, got to give them the opportunity to paint their own pictures in what they do. So what are those key skill sets that a CEO needs to acquire in running 
um, an enterprise. So for me personally, first of all, it begins with empathy. If you can't, you know, work with your team and be careful and considerate of their feelings and their needs and, and so forth, and fill their respective gaps as human beings, you know, you won't get really far. I've worked for people who lead the business as in their way or no way. They don't know much about you as an individual. They don't know what your struggles are, what your dreams are, what your aspirations are, and so forth. So my leadership skills, certainly, I want to know my team. I want to know everything about them. And I try and create a family away from a family type of environment where if things are going well as a team, we celebrate. If things are not going right, we say, pause. There is a problem. Let's fix it collectively. Let's fix it together. Let's learn our lessons. Let's proceed. So what values are important uh, to you and your firm? Integrity, honesty, teamwork, and I'm a huge family person, and most people would laugh if I say that, but I am. So that family inclusion value, you know, that, that thing is huge for me. And that family also involves our clients. We, we know everything we need to know about our clients. We know their birthdays. We know a lot that needs to be known about them. We know if they're staying with us for the 10th time, time we recognize that. So a hotel success lies on the personal side of things, you know, where you can walk into a hotel and be greeted by name and whatever your favorites are available for you, whatever your dislikes are, are removed. That's where the success is. Tell me, Siander, what's the biggest letdown you've experienced in your career so far? The most recent one is that I trusted a fellow black entrepreneur with something big, wow. something huge for us. And we we're very clear about how big it was for us. And for him, it was just another, you know, contract. And he let us down a bit time. And uh, we've obviously rectified it, fortunately. We, as I mentioned about our transparency, our client knew exactly what we were doing, who we were using, what their obligations were. Contracts were, were basically written down. It was all transparent. So we were able to salvage our relationship with our client because we had been transparent from A to Z with everything that involved this particular incident. Um, and we were able to, to, to resolve that. So it really led me to thinking that, you know, a lot of time and effort has got to be spent at empowering, you know, younger entrepreneurs merging in corporate spaces that integrity is everything. You know, your deliverance is your stamp of approval. It could get you so many other contracts. You know, it's pointless taking on 10 jobs if you can't fulfill even one of the 10. Rather accept one, get paid for the one, and do it well, and not do the other nine. An empathic leader who is hands-on and a bit of a perfectionist who is particular about how things should be done. That is Sianda. We are now particularly interested in his lifestyle choices. All right, I have a few quick fire questions for you. What do you love to eat? Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> What's your fashion style? Crazy. Well, if I like it, I wear it. I will, yeah, I can't pin it to one thing. I love suits and sneakers. Mm. I love, um, you know, pets and shirts. Uh, mm. It varies on the mood. mood. And what are your favorite brands to wear? Gucci. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what other CEOs do you currently look up to? At this stage, I'm actually reading a lot about Richard Branson. I've never really paid attention. I don't know why. I never really have because I suppose I've always looked, you know, into Africa for inspiration because I suppose, you know, our bases are the same, you know, our teachings are the same and struggles are the same. So now I'm looking a bit into Richard Branson. Um, yeah. Your favorite car to drive? Mercedes. What's your favorite travel destination? Italy. Your favorite book of all time? Currently, I'm reading Vusi's book, Vusi Samagoya's book. Mm. Um, so I'm really loving it because I relate. Mm -hmm. um, I think, yeah, that's the one that I'm reading right now. And let's focus on that one for now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, lastly, I'd like to know, Sianda, what makes you happy? A lot of little things. I think um, it's for me, really, it's the smallest things in life that really give me joy. 
um, seeing my team progress, like Veronica you met earlier, she bought a car about a month ago. That was, for me, an amazing escalator on her side. Um, a few weeks before that, one of the guys who you'll soon meet, Johnny, got married. Um, you know, so it's really those, you know, kind of things, just seeing the team grow. Um, and also what gives me the greatest joy as well is to grow the business and just see really a lot of people coming through and getting employment and joining the team. Um, that gives me joy because I think that if you can help somebody, that one person and help them to the best of your ability, it just helps so many other people beyond your own sight. Mm. Um, and yeah, I get a bit of joy obviously from traveling, Mm, buying all the things that I like to buy. <laughs> so all of the things I mix, but I really think that for me it's really the smallest things and the success of the team that I work with, that for me makes it all worth it. All right, thank you for coming on Under 40 CEOs. You're Sianda. welcome. <laughs> thank you for having me. Right. Hi, my name is Sianna Zamini and you too can be an Under 40 CEO.